So the purchase cycle, the opposite to the revenue cycle, but we're going to do the exact same thing, starts with the purchase requisition. Then a purchase order is placed with the supplier. The goods are delivered, so there's a delivery note. Let's just add next to purchase order the price list because there must be a, a price with that. Then a goods received note is used to acknowledge what was received and an invoice is then given by the supplier and a purchase journal recorded. Then a credit to statement is sent and now payment must be made. So a check requisition or EFT requisition is prepared and the remittance advice indicating what is being paid. Then the check or the EFT is done and cash payment journal is recorded. And if there are any issues, there will be a debit note now from the supplier and the purchase journal reversed. Okay, so what is included in each of these documents? The quantity required is included in the purchase requisition. The quantity ordered is in the purchase order as well as the price that we get from the supplier's price list. The delivery note will have the quantity that has been delivered and the goods received note will have the quantity of the items that were accepted. The invoice will then have the quantity that they're charging at the price and the purchase journal will have the same. The creditor statement will include all of the invoices that are owed to the supplier. So all outstanding. The check requisition or EFT requisition will have the rand amount that is going to be paid based on the invoices they are paying which sits in the remittance advice. Check and the EFT will then have the rand amount that's being paid and the debit note will have the quantity and the price of any items that need to be returned because they have not been accepted. Okay, so which of these documents need to be pre-numbered? The purchase requisition is an internal document so it must be pre-numbered as well as the purchase order because that is when requesting items from the supplier. The delivery note comes from the supplier, so it's not an internal document. The goods received note is pre-numbered because it's an internal document. The invoice is external document, so it's not pre-numbered. The check requisition or EFT requisition are internal, so it's pre-numbered, as well as the remittance advice. The check and the EFT are internal and are pre-numbered. The debit note comes from the supplier, so it's not an internal document. Just want to quickly discuss the process of the purchaser cycle. First of all, within the factory, they will decide they need more raw materials. So that's where the purchase requisition comes, requesting raw materials. And this could be based on demand or based on minimum reorder levels. So a control that they have in place to say, when we get to a certain level of a raw material, we need to order more. Then, a purchase order is created and sent to the supplier with the details of that requisition. There's an arrow between the two because there's segregation of duties. Different departments now involved in these steps. Okay, a very important document that I've left out here, guys, sorry, with regards to the ordering is an authorized supplier listing. And this contains the details of suppliers that this order client can purchase from. Okay, so really important documents to ensure that the goods that they're ordering are of a quality and a reasonable price. The supplier will then deliver the goods with the delivery notes. However, that's not an internal document. So a goods received note is generated in order for a pre-numbered document to exist reflecting the items that have been delivered. The supplier is going to invoice based on the delivery note, but the order client only wants to 
record what they accepted and received. So the goods received note number is going to be used in the purchase journal, although the details will come from the invoice. And if there's a difference, that's when the issues will arise and the supplier will be notified. The supplier will then send the creditor's statement with all invoices that are owed, irrespective of the credit terms. The check requisition or EFT requisition will have the RAND amount that the order client is going to pay the supplier based on the invoices that are currently outstanding, which will be on the remittance advice. The check and EFT will be released and there will only be a debit note if there were issues. Okay, moving on to segregation of duties, guys. Everywhere we've got an arrow indicates we should have a different department doing that function. Creating that document, receiving those goods, or so on. Reconciliation. Every second document reconciled to the first, so purchase order to the purchase requisition. Delivery notes to the purchase order. Goods received note to the delivery note as well as to the purchase order to ensure that we're not only accepting what was delivered, but accepting what we actually wanted in our order. Invoice to the goods received note. Creditor's statement to the invoices, all invoices. Check requisition, EFT requisition, and the remittance advice. Remittance advice all to invoices, and then the total on the remittance advice reconciled to the check requisition and or EFT requisition. The RAND amount on the check requisition or EFT requisition is reconciled to the check or EFT and debit notes the any issues back to the invoice and to the goods received note. Access controls. Remember, to any unused source documents, there must be restricted access so that fictitious documents are not created. In terms of your physical items, Access controls over the delivery and the receiving of the goods is required. Okay, to make sure that once it's accepted, somebody doesn't go and steal the items. Um, or additional segregation of duties, guys, over the receiving of the goods. So two people should be checking the quantity and the quality of the goods to make sure that somebody isn't stealing there either. And then back to access controls, physical access controls. If a check is used, in which case when the money is drawn, there needs to be access controls over that cash so that that cash is not stolen. I'm also just going to add another access controls to your EFT requisition and that's the computer side of things, logging on for an EFT. And lastly, authorization. Authorization of the purchase requisition and of the purchase order. Authorization of that authorized supplier listing. Then, on receiving of the goods, authorization of that goods received note to make sure only goods received are recorded. Authorization of the invoice. And then, of that check requisition or EFT requisition, because we've got to make sure that only people who are allowed to are authorizing. And then finally of the releasing of the EFT or the signing of the check must be authorized by two people. So segregation of duties there as well. All right, let's look at the payroll cycle. 